Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the 22nd video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own 3D Endless Runner game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll be adding in some UI elements to make it look a little nicer and we'll be displaying the gems and distance that we've run on our screen as well. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. And now, on with the tutorial. So first things first, I am going to import a couple of textures that we're going to use in our game. So, let's go to the textures folder and let's drag and drop these three textures. And as always, head to the pinned comment or the link in the description and you can go and download these for free. Now, there's a couple of things that we'll need to do to this to kind of make sure that they work as intended. And it's up to you whether you want to. I mean, they might be fine as icons as they are now. It's entirely up to you, like I say. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll take this first icon here and we want to change the texture type because we want to make it more of a sprite. So if we click Sprite, scroll down and click on Apply, you'll notice that the background does indeed disappear. Now the reason we want to use it as a sprite is because we want it to display the actual little man running rather than have the black background as we can see here. And I guess you can do that for the other textures if you want to. Again, a lot of this is all your own desire because it's your game at the end of the day. So what I'm going to do it's all three of those textures, just change them all to sprites. Now what I want to do is bring them into the actual canvas itself. So we're going to display little icons to say how many gems we've collected, how far we've run, and how many you know, coins, gems, whatever. So let's go to the canvas right here. Let's double click to zoom out. And I want to change what this text actually says. So we're going to have to change this in some scripting as well. For now, I'm just going to leave it as coins zero. But what I will do is bring in a raw image. So game object, UI, let's go to raw image. And I'm going to just call this um, coin icon. And then I'm going to drag and drop the coin icon onto it right there. If that works, but it's not, it's over here. Texture, my apologies. There we go. Yeah, that was my fault. So when I dragged and dropped that onto here, what that actually did is create a new game object. Obviously, we don't want that. So I've fallen into the trap of, oh, actually, we need to drag it over here because it's a texture. It may be a sprite, but it's still a texture. So the next thing to do is I'm going to use the rec tool and just place this around about there. And then I'm going to move the text for coin count just to about there. And let's change it to zero. Uh, what we'll do before we go any further is let's go into our scripts and we'll go into, is it, I think it's master info, isn't it? So let's go into the master info script. And what we need to do is here where we have coin display, remove the word coins, but keep the double quotes. So the double quotes have to stay there and it also has to say coin count. So I'm going to save that script. I'm going to head back into Unity, let it recompile. And then we'll press play and just make sure that it does look as intended. This is a design choice. I've got, you know, the little bar there and I've got the icon actually extending outside of the bar. It's up to you whether you want to change the size of the bar. Do whatever you want. Again, this is your game at the end of the day. You make it how you want it to be. Cool. I'm happy with that. Uh, so let's go back to our textures and let's try something else here. So let's click on the uh, coin icon there. And I want to click on Generate Mip Map. And then I'm going to click Apply again. And what this will do is it will make it look a little less grainy. If we go to the game now, you can see it looks a little bit more as it should do. Um, so as this tutorial is going to be all about UI and making it look a little better, what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to move the coins over just a little bit. Move my coin icon over just a tiny bit once again. And I'm going to select the top left anchor. And the final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little colored bar just here. So I'm going to take the coin back, hold control, press D. And I'm going to change the color to kind of like a, a yellowy kind of color. And we'll make it full on the alpha. And then I'm going to shrink the size to round about there. And keep it anchored top left. And yep, I think that looks okay. So... 
At this point, we've got our coins displaying. We've got all that. That's all good. But now, how many gems have we got? So why don't we add the gems in? And what we can do is we can copy and paste what we've already created here. But what we need to do first is move coin icon up just a touch because we always want the fade out to be the top most layer. <clears throat> so what we'll do now is rename this to coin uh, side, which is the side that is the color. And now I'm going to take coin back, coin side, coin count and coin icon, hold control, press D to duplicate and then bring them just below to round about there. That looks okay. You take the time, you make it more precise if you want to. And let's rename these. So this is going to be gem back, and then gem side, and then gem count, and finally gem icon. And I'm pretty sure you can see what's gonna happen here. The next couple of seconds is gonna look completely different. Are we ready? Gem icon, let's drag and drop the gem icon. And then gem side, let's change that to red. So already, there we are. We've got our collectibles starting to appear on our screen. So it's starting to look cooler. Again, with the whole design choice thing, it's up to you if you want to do the same as me or if you want to make yours bigger. But play around with it. See what you think fits best. Now, the next thing we're going to do, you probably guessed it. Yep, we're going to set this up so as we can have the distance run as well. We're going to do something slightly different here. So let's go to uh, gem back, gem side, gem count, gem icon. Hold control, press D to duplicate. Move that down to round about there. Does that look okay? Yeah, that should do the trick. And let's rename these. So run back and then run side and then run count and finally run icon. So now let's go to the, make sure we're on the run icon and let's add the icon for the little running man, but let's change the color. Let's change it to a kind of green kind of color, just so as it looks a bit different, just so as it's not yellow, the same as the coins. Again, it's entirely up to you. If you want to do that, you can change it to blue if you wanted to. Yeah, just a very little blue color there. But if you want to make this even more your own, what I would recommend is that if you take this particular texture that you've downloaded for free and go and edit it in some other software, change its color to white so you've got more control over its actual color. It's entirely up to you. Uh, next, let's take the run side and make that a green color as well. And let's see how that looks. Cool. So now let's get the coding in place so as all three of these update as necessary. And we can do that inside the master info script. And all it really is, is just a case of the same as the coins being able to update the distance run and the gem count. But in order to do that, we need to create the game objects as variables. So beneath internal display, what we'll say is serialize field and game object. And we'll have this as gem display, semicolon. Next, serialize field and then game object, and this will be run display, if I can spell it right, semicolon. And like I said, we can use the exact same line of code. So we just need to copy that line there and paste it below. This one will say gem display, and then change coin count to gem count. Next, head down, and instead of it being coin count again, change it to run display, and this one will be distance run. Because remember, last time what we did is every time we were running, we added one to the distance run. Therefore, the distance run will be able to be displayed on our screen here. So distance run and save that script. Next thing we need to do is head back into Unity. Give it a moment just to compile. And what we'll do is we need to attach those variables that we've just created onto that script. So on level controls, we've got gem display and run display. So that means we need to have a run account on run display and gem count on gem display. And I'm gonna save my scene. And what we should see here is as soon as we start, we should see the running count going up. Whenever we collect a gem, 
we should see that change. And we already know about the coins, so we know they're going to change as normal. So let's see all of this in action now. All of our UI displaying nicely. So you can see the run being done there. Excellent. So we should see the coins. Cool. And now let's collect the gem. And there we go. Awesome. So we can see now that our UI is really coming together quite nicely. And let's end the run there. So we end it at 59. Cool. And the fade out screen is on top. So we know all of that is being covered. And when I spoke about, you know, having this as your own, um, changing, you know, the UI basically, like I say, my icons extend out above and below this little um, kind of backing here. It's up to you if you want to do that. Uh, all you would need to do if you want to have everything encompassed inside it is just change the size of these particular icons. So like the coin back, you would just raise it up to there and down to there. And the same with the coin side, you would just, let me zoom in so we can grab it quite nicely. Grab it up to there and down to there. So you can see that's how your coins would display. Uh, do you know what, actually, I think I might do that. I think my original design choice might have been a bit sucky. Uh, so <laughs> let's, uh, let's actually have it as it should be like that. Maybe that's a better design choice. And same with that one to there. And the same with our running man, right there, that to there, that to there, bring that up to there, and to there. And maybe, maybe we actually need to increase the size of our font as well. Maybe it's too small now, so maybe we should change it to 66. 66 and 66, but it does also mean that we'll probably have to increase uh, this here. So if we increase that size to there, same with this one, increase that to there. To there and this one there and there and how's that look on our game cool yep i'm quite happy with that let's press play and let's just make sure that all this still looks good you should probably you know take the time to make this look better don't rush it like what i've done because at the end of the day me rushing this is just to kind of get the aim out there you know so we all know what it looks like cool awesome so our UI is now displayed in our level. Next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to have that then displayed on our main menu. And that's actually really, really quick to do. But what we're also going to do is we're going to work with something called player prefs. And that is going to save and load this information whenever we close the game. So let's say we've run a couple of levels. We've ran a total of 100 meters. We close the game. We come back in, we want the game to remember that we've already run 100 meters. So we'll be doing some saving and loading in the next tutorial. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial. And I'll see you in the next one.